Hi everyone. Let us talk about breathing exercise today. So breathing exercise, also known as the ventilatory training, are the techniques which helps us to treat, control, prevent, manage and rehab your pulmonary dysfunctions. According to the need of the patients, breathing exercise is divided. So the first one being and the most common which we practice is diaphragmatic breathing exercise. As the name tells itself, talking about this exercise is all about your diaphragm. So in patients who uses their accessory muscles for breathing, they exert themselves. So we train their diaphragm to be used in diaphragmatic breathing exercise. So how do we train this? For diaphragmatic breathing exercise, the patient has to be in his or her comfortable position. You can start with semi fowler's position. Now, what do we do for this is, first we train with the feedback. We place our hands on the rectus abdominis. Ask the patient to inhale deeply but slowly through your nose. Now, while inspiring, we ask the patient to keep your stomach out or my hand has to move upwards so the patient can feel his diaphragm moving. Not exactly the diaphragm moving, but in this technique, the diaphragm moves itself. But we give the feedback to the patient in the rectus abdominis that while inspiring, my hand should move upwards. So there is a room of pressure in the diaphragm. Now, while the patient is breathing out through the mouth slowly, we will ask the patient to make my hands go deep inside so that there is again the use of diaphragm. So this is the feedback we give to the patient while inspiring and expiring. I'll repeat it again. When the patient inspires slowly through the nose, the feedback, which is your hand, it has to move up, which you place on the rectus abdominis of the patient while expiring. Is there a word called expiring? Okay, whatever it is. When the patient breathes out, you have to you have to tell your patient, instruct your patient that my hand, it has to go deep inside. So in this way, the patient will get to, <coughs> sorry. In this way, the patient will get to train his or her diaphragm. Now, the progression of this exercise can be from static to dynamic. Also, after certain periods of this technique, the patient can use his hand himself for the feedback. And later on, the feedback will not be necessary. The patient can voluntarily control his or her breathing. Later stages, it will be controlled subconsciously. So this was all about diaphragmatic breathing. It, uh, it increases the vital capacity of your lungs. Next, let us move on to pursed lip breathing. So the name it tells itself again, pursed lip means in this breathing technique, you have to purse your lip. So what does this help in? Pursed lip breathing, this helps to control your forceful expiration. It also helps you to cope up with the episodes of dyspnea. Dyspnea, also known as your shortness of breath. So when a patient practices pursed lip breathing, and when he uh, has shortness of breath or dyspnea, he can practice this pursed lip breathing to get relief. Now, how do we do pursed lip breathing? The patient will inspire through the nose again, deep, long inspiration, then purse his or her lips as if blowing out the candle. In this way, he will leave a long expiration. <clears throat> Sorry again, he will leave a long expiration. Now in this you have to explain to the patient that the expiration should not be forceful as this will increase the turbulence in the airways. So this was all about your pursed lip breathing. Next, let us go to glossopharyngeal breathing. Now this is the breathing exercise which is quite difficult to teach to the patient. So this, uh, So the patient has to be mentally very much sound to learn this glossopharyngeal breathing. Now what does glossopharyngeal breathing do? 
it increases the inspiratory capacity, especially in patients who has spinal injury, who had spinal injury. So the technique of glossopharyngeal breathing is you have to ask the patient to take few gulps of air, few gulps of air, five, uh, five to six gulps of air in the beginning phase is okay. Those gulps of air has to be pushed back by the tongue and then swallowed to take it inside the lung. Now, this is quite complicated for the patient to understand. So, as I told earlier, for a patient to understand this, the patient has to be mentally sound and has to be voluntarily involved in doing this. So, glossopharyngeal breathing, I'll repeat it again. The patient has to take few gulps of air, push, cl close his mouth, push the air back with the tongue, swallow the air that goes inside the lung. So this has to be practiced again and again. But, okay, this is important. In all the breathing exercise, don't exceed too much that a patient gets fatigue. Now, let us talk about positive expiratory pressure breathing. Now, what happens in positive expiratory pressure breathing is, this helps this breathing technique it helps in mobilizing the secretions accumulated in your lungs and thus helps in its clearance. Now, in positive expiratory pressure breathing, we use a manual instrument. The patient takes that instrument in his mouth, takes few breaths of inspiration, then expire, if expire is a word, then breathes out through the instrument. Now, when that exp when that breathing out is happening, what happens is the secretions get mobilized, which will be easier for the patient to clear it out. After the patient breathes out in that manual device, he takes the device out from the mouth, huffs for some time, huffs for two to three times and then coughs so that the loosened secretions will come out. So this was all about positive expiratory pressure breathing. Next, segmental breathing exercise. What happens in segmental breathing exercise is we focus on certain segments of the lungs. Let us learn how do we practice lateral coastal expansion. Now, you place the patient in a comfortable position again. Now, you have to give feedback through your hands. So, you place your hands laterally on the lower end of your rib. Now, before the patient inspires, just before the patient inspires, you have to give downward and inward pressure. As the patient is breathing out, you have to just feel the ribs moving downward and inward. So this was for lateral coastal expansion. The process is same for the basal expansion, just your hand placement will differ according to the segments of the lung. This also the patient can uh, provide the feedback himself later after he has learned the technique and later the need of feedback will not be there. Lastly, let us talk about incentive spirometry. Incentive spirometry is a device which contains mouthpiece. Now the patient places the mouthpiece inside his mouth obviously and then inhales deeply and maximally until he reaches to his target provided by the therapist. After that inspiration, he holds it for a few seconds, takes the mouthpiece out and then exhales. So this is continue for few cycles. What does incentive spirometry do? It helps to prevent alveolar collapse and atelectasis in the patients who are in postoperative patients. Thank you. I hope this was helpful for you all.